the International Olympic Committee's decision to allow Russian and Belarusian athletes to compete at the Paris 2024 Olympics under neutral flags has caused widespread reaction. The Australian Olympic Committee supports the decision, but the UK disagrees and is calling for a blanket ban. Joining us live now is AOC Chief Executive Matt Carroll. Matt, thanks for your time this afternoon. Why should Russian and Belarusian athletes be allowed to compete in Paris? Well, it's, it's about the athletes um, and it's, you know, athletes from Russia, athletes from, from Belarus. Um, it, the most important thing is for them to be able to compete. The athletes themselves haven't started the war, aren't competing in, aren't in the war. Um, so the, the Olympic movement globally is all about unifying the world through sport. So it is that the decision, the IOC, after consulting with all the international federations, sporting federations, consulting with the National Olympic Committee, with the athletes commissions, that, that they've come up with yeah, it is a struggle. It is a dilemma. The IOC have always said that a way of having athletes from Russia and Belarus being able to compete in the games. Still a lot of restrictions, no flags, no protocols, no national anthems, none of that. Uh, no officials from Russia will be invited or from Belarus. So it's the same as the, the uh, Russian tennis players competing in Melbourne. Very strong restrictions. And also that they have to agree to those before they are allowed to compete. The Russian Olympic Committee will be invited by the IOC on the terms that the IOC will set down. So what happens if they get a gold medal? No anthem? No anthem, no flag, no recognition of Russia or Belarus. Is it going to be difficult though for these athletes to compete as neutral, not display any flag, have, be able to sing the anthem when such a big part of the Olympics is about representing your country? Well, well, it is difficult, and that's, that's that dilemma. It's that balance between um, being able to go to the games and compete, and these athletes have been preparing the same as athletes from all around the world for these games after the uh, the Tokyo Games. So they'll want to compete. They don't have to go. You know, it's a decision for that athlete, but I think uh, you'll find most will say, well, look, at least I'm going to compete, and that's going to be a great opportunity. They obviously have to qualify, um, and that's part of the... Um, the IOC's process is seeing how the athletes can qualify through competitions in Asia. Britain's cultural secretary says that the IOC's plan legitimises Putin's illegal war in Ukraine. Does she have a point? Um, look, obviously everyone's entitled to their view. Uh, we're not talking about the war in Ukraine is terrible, no doubt about it at all. And, you know, the United Nations and Security Council and those organisations will deal with that. We're talking about the athletes of the world. We're not talking about... The, uh, the the war or well, there's lots of things that happen in our world which aren't great and that continue to happen even outside of uh, Ukraine and, and other places so you know it, it's very the IOC want to use the power of sport as that uniting piece right? but therefore bringing the athletes giving the athletes the opportunity to be in Paris is uniting the world through sport yeah I suppose what message does it send to Ukraine though by allowing Russian athletes to compete and how damaging is it going to be for the Olympics if we do see Ukraine boycott them? Well, I, I am, you know, not obviously I'm not part of the, I, the IOC, but uh, the IOC obviously being, uh, you know, discussing this situation both with the uh, Ukrainian athletes and with uh, the Ukrainian government. So I presume they are having to continue to have those discussions so that they won't boycott. Most importantly, too, is to ensure that all the Ukrainian athletes, many of them aren't in Ukraine at the moment, are able to do their qualifications and preparations for the Games unhindered by the, uh, the, uh, the war in Ukraine. Do you think there's going to be any pressure from the Australian government, also you know, other countries such as the US, to see this uh, decision be reversed? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I mean, the, uh, we've kept uh, the Australian government informed uh, since these discussions have been going since last year. The, the IOC, obviously keeping governments informed as well. Um, they, the president of the, um, uh, the IOC, is obviously, he's addressed the United Nations, he's also addressed the, the, the summit built in Indonesia last year, the economic summit. So the world's leaders are being kept up to speed um, and the rationale for it and the decisions, if you read the, the uh, United Nations, something like that, the IOC statement is that uh, the United Nations recognises the, uh, the power of sport and the role of the Olympic Committee. Mm. And are you confident in the background checks? that these athletes will have to go through to, to ensure that these athletes from Russia don't support the war in Ukraine? Well, look, you know, as confident as any process can be, it's not only just that as well, but it's also making sure they are clean, um, that there's no, no issues around doping. So but it will be both, and it won't just be a, a system that's going to be very, very transparent as well. Just finally, Matt, countdown is on to Paris. You're excited. How, how different is it going to be compared to the last Olympics in Tokyo? 
Well, I didn't quite make it to the last Olympics in Tokyo because we had the half 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 the team home uh, after the first uh, week. Um, so I am certainly looking forward to it, and we have a we'll have a very strong team again um, across a, a whole lot of sports and disciplines. Um, so you know, Australians will be able to celebrate uh, their athletes again, and they'll they'll do their best to inspire the country. AOC Chief Executive Matt Carroll, thanks so much for your time. Absolute pleasure.